Hi, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto coming to you from the nation's capital, where my next guest says that Iran, not Iraq, should be the focus today as it gets dangerously close to building a nuclear bomb. He is now even suggesting the use of force. With us now, former ambassador to the U.N., John Bolton. Ambassador, pretty hawkish words. Why? Well, I think if the choice is between a nuclear Iran and the use of military force, uh, th there's just really simply no question about it. But I want to stress, it's not the first option to pursue. Uh, it's, it's the last resort. I do think now, though, that the evidence is overwhelming that Iran continues to make progress to uh, overcome all the technical difficulties in the nuclear fuel cycle. Uh, and the evidence is conclusive, in my view, that they're not going to be talked out of this effort. All right. Now, as you know, Ambassador Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad indicated that he would be willing to permit neighboring countries to send inspectors to some of these uh, facilities in question. What do you think of that? Well, he already has inspectors there from the International Atomic Energy Agency. And in fact, the most recent reports of the progress that Iran has made uh, come from the IAEA. What this shows is that the capacity that Iran is developing leaves the decision about the nuclear weapons issue uh, almost entirely in their hands. Uh, and that's what uh, is most frightening, because it means the possibility uh, of external pressure uh, stopping the program is now greatly reduced. Now, we've talked about this before, Ambassador, but do you believe that uh, Iran has been as militant and as obstinate on this issue uh, because we are considered so bogged down in Iraq and the political appetite in this country is such over Iraq that there's no way we would do anything to or, or against Iran? Well, I don't believe that's where we are. I don't think that's where the president is. At least I hope he's not. And I, I rather suspect that Iran uh, at least worries about it a little bit. I think this is part uh, of a different plan that Iran has, a, an effort to project power uh, throughout the Middle East and globally. It's reflected in the nuclear weapons program. It's reflected in their extensive political and military interference in Iraq. And it's reflected in their continuing and expanding support for terrorist groups like Hezbollah and Hamas. This is really Iran projecting power, trying to increase its influence almost everywhere. All right, and they continue to influence it, and nothing changes. And I'm wondering, your comments notwithstanding, whether anything will. Well, I think that the Europeans, frankly, have to get more serious about the nuclear threat. They've been trying for going on four years now to talk Iran out of its nuclear weapons program. Uh, they have failed, failed completely. And I think they need to step up to the plate. And with new leaders in France and soon in the United Kingdom, uh, I hope they will and join with us in dramatically ratcheting up the economic and political pressure on Iran. I'd rather talk to Iran after they're squeezed more than they are now. But being realistic, I'm well, not how sure. How would you squeeze them differently than how we squeeze them now? Well, we're squeezing them in American terms, but the Europeans still have extensive trade and investment with Iran. And unfortunately, many of the Europeans want economic sanctions without pain. That isn't going to work. But that's why I say if the Europeans or the Russians or the Chinese can't be brought along, we'll have to do the job ourselves, either through changing the regime in Tehran or, as I say, as a last resort, through the use of military force. In, in utilizing either or both options, oil prices would skyrocket. I think there's a high risk, uh, obviously, in the use of force. One, that you might not completely break through on the nuclear fuel cycle. Iran could well have facilities we don't know anything about. And I think there's an obvious risk uh, to the price of oil. That's why this is not a preferred option. But again, consider what the impact on oil would be once Iran does have a nuclear weapons capability. That price is not going to go down. Do you think that the influence of al-Qaeda is such, even in Iran, that al-Qaeda influences in Iran and Iraq could ever join together? 
I don't see that influence inside Iran, but uh, you know the saying in that region is the enemy of my enemy is my friend, and I think for tactical reasons, uh, anti-American activity uh, would be something they could join together on. Iran has a different mission in its own lights than uh, Al Qaeda does, a, a radically different mission, uh, which is why they're pursuing a, uh, their own path uh, in in Iraq. Let me ask you, Ambassador, your comments uh, and, and, and Vice President uh, Cheney's comments on Iran, on, on, on their ambitions. Uh, they get plenty of press coverage, but the talk is within the administration not as much respect as they used to. Is, the, is it a sign of a more dovish administration, a more skittish administration, a more leery administration? What do you think? Well, with respect to Iran, I think uh, there's a, an enormous institutional bias within the State Department to side with the Europeans and try and resolve this through negotiation. Uh, this time, however, I think the empirical evidence is clear that the negotiations have failed. They have not slowed the Iranians down. They've not dissuaded them from their ultimate strategic objective. Uh, and that's why I think moving toward sig significantly greater pressure uh, up to and including regime change or the use of force has to be the way to go. And remember, ultimately the president sets the policy, and he has said repeatedly it is unacceptable for Iran to have nuclear weapons. I, I think when he says unacceptable, what he means is unacceptable. All right, Ambassador, very good seeing you again. Thank you. Glad to be